th- there's things that you could do. I'm, I'm probably the, one of the flyest people that shop at Marshalls. We <laughs> 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 uh, sleep on Marshalls. Right Marshalls got this drip. Marshalls right yeah, here. Marshalls got drip, quick man. to tell people like, <laughs> so everybody be like, yo, that's a fly shirt. Jerome be like, Marshalls. 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 On Cotswold. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> tell you. Welcome to a Christian podcast. The podcast where we have Christ-centered conversations. I'm your host, Kevin Wilson. Welcome to another episode of A Christian Podcast with Kevin Wilson. I'm your host, Kevin Wilson. Let's go to my right. We're going to go around the room. Just, uh, you know, announce yourself. Uh, let us know who you are. What's going on, everybody? Uh, Jerome Brown. I am in wealth management. Um, manage money for high net worth clients, trust, estate planning, financial consulting, and, the, and the such. Pleasure to be here. What's going on, everybody? This is uh, Jason Payne, um, certified financial planner. Um, pretty much in the same space of comprehensive financial planning for retirees, accumulators, um, just working towards different facets of financial planning, such as estate planning, cash flow analysis, those sort of every, everything really. So, dope. dope. Cool. Uh, pleasure to be here. Shahid Rana. I work in economic development. So, uh, deputy director for Mecklenburg County, for those who don't know, Mecklenburg County is one of 100 counties in the state of North Carolina. We're also the largest and most prosperous county hey. in North Carolina. And a lot of my responsibility is business <laughs> attraction, new job creation, uh, small business support, arts and culture, tourism, and then workforce development. That's what's up. I don't know what y'all just said. Y'all just said <laughs> <laughs> y'all just said a whole lot. It sounds good. I'm going to have to rewind it and watch it again. <laughs> Um, but before we get into the show, I got a couple of announcements. Number one, ACP, a Christian podcast worldwide family. I want to shout out y'all. First of all, thank you to each and every person that watches. Like, like I always say, I'll be overwhelmed looking at all the comments and different places and the geography. I'm like, it's mad countries and stuff. So shout out to you guys. I want to shout out uh, two people specifically, St. J from London. And I want to shout out DLEJ3535 from Springfield, Missouri. I never heard of Springfield, Missouri. I heard of Springfield, uh, Massachusetts, Mm -hmm. but not Missouri. So shout out to you guys. Let us know in the comments where you're watching from, um, your name. And then also let us know, how did you find the podcast? Like everybody discovered it in a different way. Did a friend send it to you? Did you just see it on your algorithm? Like just on your timeline on, on Instagram or YouTube or whatever. So let us know how you found it. And then if you want to get merch, can I pray for you uh, with God? Jesus died for you, all that stuff. You can do so in the description. And the last thing is, if you want to support a Christian podcast financially, there are ways you can do that. Buy me a coffee, PayPal, Cash App. Um, You can do that. The links are in the description. Uh, And it's just so appreciated to have you guys help us, like, be able to do what God has called us to do and continue to um, make ways. Like, it's just crazy. There'll be certain times where I'm like, I have an idea. I want to do something. And I need something. I literally like put it on buy me a coffee, and like like I can't lie, like it just either that week or that day somebody will pay for it. And so uh, it's just like it's just so dope to see people, the body of Christ, provide for the body of Christ to continue to do the work that He's called. So hmm. I appreciate y'all. Now got a couple questions. If you listen to the podcast, you know I, I always like to ask something a little ridiculous. I got a couple <laughs> things. All right. Um, so question one. You get a million dollars for each percentage your phone battery currently has. What y'all got? How much y'all got? Ooh. Oh, we had uh, 77 million. Yeah, I'm at, I'm at 76. I'm at uh, 47. I'm at That's 44. more than enough. Yeah. I'm good <laughs> off of that. I'm good off of What'd that. What you got? 44. 44? All right. Shahe got the both. Oh, He's yeah. 77? I got yeah. 76. <laughs> I should have kept it on the charge a little bit. <laughs> charge your phone. Charge it now. <laughs> All right. Uh, you get $500 million. The only thing is, in order for this to happen, in order for you to get this $500 million, the last person that you texted, I'm going to say other than me because y'all all texted me <laughs> to get in the building, other than me has to be broke for the rest of their life. Oh, do you do oh, it? Oh, man. Nah, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Um, last person that texted me was somebody I work with in, in the church. Oh, uh, uh, nah, she, nah. Okay, can't, okay, okay. Can't do that. I just text my dad and my wife, so nah. Nah. <laughs> I just texted before you, my uh, kid's mother, so no. <laughs> Look, I know some people out there watching, they like, shoot. Yeah, they <laughs> like, nah, nah. 
you, you better than me. Nah, I'm going to do that. That's funny. If she broke, then I'm broke. Right. Uh, let me see. Who is the last person that takes it? Uh, yeah, nah. These my boys. I can't. I can't do it. It's the group chat. Do we? Do we can't all be like. Bro. I, I, I can't do it. Like if I'm eating and just to see they broke. Like come on. I I can't do it. All right, last one. Would you rather get a hundred thousand dollars every time you run a mile, or one dollar for every step you take? That's a good question. That is a good question. <laughs> Man, I'm take to the mile. To give you some context, I did the, I did some little research. It's about on average, it depends on the person, but about fifteen hundred steps per mile jogging on average. But you said every uh, for one dollar you get for every step you take for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Uh, or every time you run a mile, you get a you get a hundred thousand. I take the steps. I can take I take the steps too. Take the steps. Cause this for the rest of your life, man. Like, yeah, I, mean, I ain't gonna be running miles at seventy. Nah, nah facts. So, I ain't gonna be running miles every day either. I might so. have to just run it up while I'm young. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, why are you always running, bro? <laughs> Trying to get to like, this money. money. I might treat it like it's, like like it's a job for real. Like, yeah, yeah. I gotta I get to the turn. Life, you know, you go from home to the car to the office. Yeah. Some days I'm not walking as much just because of the facts. rhythm of the day. Yeah. 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 True. So you going with the mile? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I might just have to treat it like a job for real. Like, yeah, let's get to this one. Yeah. <laughs> Run for y'all better, y'all better than me. Yeah. My knees can't take that. Now. I feel you. <laughs> nah, I feel you. All right. So as you can see throughout their introduction, throughout the questions, we're talking about money, finances, and we want to do it from a kingdom perspective because I think oftentimes we have so much information uh, shared about. Money, you see it on Instagram all the time. You see the people, oh, this is what you should do. This is what you should invest in. This blah blah blah. But uh, I don't see as much. There's plenty of things out there, but I don't see as much from a kingdom perspective. So um, let's first start off talking about like foundation. When it came to money, did you guys grow up with a healthy understanding view of it? Like was money. Was having money a thing? Was not having money? Like, what was your perspective growing up? And, yeah, and y'all want to... Uh, well, you go ahead, kick it off. Yeah, it's on me. Um, I wouldn't say it was a unhealthy type of scenario that I grew up in. Like, my household wasn't the, the best at managing money, but I did have influences like my grandparents who were pretty pretty well off. My grandfather was a, fa- a, a farmer. And um, he would always come around and give money, you know, hop around the holidays or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he was always stressed, like, you know, spending on what you need, but save a little bit of it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think part of the upbringing, too, really from a e- experiential standpoint and also just, you know, just baseline teaching from my parents is like, you know, you should be being you shouldn't be spendthrifting or, or anything like that. Like that sh- you should have some discipline when it comes to this, because at some point you're going to need it later. So I think I've always had a concept of saving. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, for for me, maybe it wasn't always there just for different circumstances up until obviously this point. But got you. Yeah, that's another that's another story. I got you. Yeah. We'll see for me. Um, both of my parents were like hustlers. So like my, my dad was a small business owner and my mom got into real estate as well. So when I was aware of what money was and finances, at that point I was counting money. Mm -hmm. Like, so my dad had a small business, he'll bring the fives and ones and tens. And, you know, on Sundays and Saturdays, we would count the money. Right. Like how old are you? I mean, this is elementary school. Right. Um, I would also take the return checks from my dad and, you know, reconcile that with his checkbook. And then mm-hmm. got in, my parents got into real estate early. <laughs> He's going crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, was, he was getting all the teaching, you know, all of it. So, and, and my mom also helped me start my own t-shirt business um, in elementary school. So I had an LLC and everything. Um, Did you have a Roth growing up too? Huh? Did you have a Roth IRA growing no, up? No, I, I didn't. <laughs> um, in college, I essentially got one. But, right. uh, hmm. but the, on the flip side, my dad was very frugal. Like he wouldn't even allow for us to buy him shoes. He would like wear the same Kmart mm. shoes and wear them out. And it's like, Dad, your feet hurt. Like this, yeah. this spend sixty dollars or some or some <laughs> yeah, new balances. New he's like, nope, he's gonna get the Kmart twenty nine ninety nine. And but my mom, she didn't have the best money management. 
Mm-hmm. So I know how to mm-hmm. make money and spend it <laughs> the wrong way. <laughs> Got you. And I didn't learn the the saving investing component of it. So Got uh, you. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Same here. Really. Definitely didn't have that same situation growing up. Um, coming from the Caribbean, my parents are over Trinidad. So we came here and um, one thing they taught me is perseverance and how to work. So my mom worked 16 hours a day, um, six days a week since I've been born. I think she retired last year. So we knew if you wanted to make money, you had to work two, three jobs to make that money. Um, but we didn't have a concept of saving or investing, to be honest. And that's why I got into this industry, to find out how money worked. Because I started to realize uh, the questions that broke people always had is, what can I do with my money? Where, yeah. I'm, where I realize now wealthy people is like, how can I make my money work for me? Mm-hmm. So we... Um, we they worked very hard, but you know we were, we never lacked for anything. But we didn't have that abundance to match with the amount of hours that they put in for it. So they didn't allow their money to work for them. Mm. So it's like at the end of the day, they 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 worked, but it's like you really don't even get to enjoy yeah. the the fruit of your work because by yeah. the time you're done working, you're tired. tired. You're mm-hmm. a slave to the labor. Yeah. Basically. The one thing I knew yeah. is you know, and honestly, it wasn't even ten percent. Of the tithe it's like listen just put something to god so he can bless all this labor that we're we're putting out that we don't have to work as hard Mm. yeah so let's talk about that even ties because i I grew up you know middle class like you know never really struggled or had lack um but again you know growing up it wasn't always like you always had the latest i'm talking about you know the latest great da 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 Mm -hmm. but we we never had like i never was like yo i'm hungry or like i never had to want yeah. food or something like that. Yeah. Um, what about so tithes? Like growing up, my mom, both my parents, they taught me the the concept of tithes, and so I know some people like have to learn it as adults. I fortunately didn't. Like it was mm-hmm. just okay. I'm talking about, and when I got something for my birthday, or when I was young and start cutting grass, or walking the dogs, it's like okay, I, I made ten dollars. Well, I better give one, <laughs> you know, to the to the. Uh, to church and so mm-hmm. to God. And so what, what was your understanding of tithes mm-hmm. and, and offering and, and all of that growing up? I mean, I, I was kind of in the same boat as you. Like I understood like you give a tenth of what you get, you know, to to the Lord for, you know, his his increase for his kingdom. Um, so it wasn't much of an issue growing up. Um, again, it was just a matter of me actually having the money to, to put that into practice. Yeah. Um, and um, to to your point, it's, it's, it goes back to just being obedient, right? So that God can fulfill what He's already said. Like He'll bless what's left mm-hmm. after that. Um, and it also really, after a while, I understood it really teaches you how to manage your money as well. Because mm-hmm. it's like everything is God's, but mm-hmm. you know we're essentially stewards of what He's given us. You know, so if we practice, you know, putting Him first, He'll just He'll just give us the wisdom to. Do what we need to do with the rest, and also bless it too. Facts. Yeah, yeah. It was a. Uh, if the tithe was never a concept talked about, we just knew to give money to church, right? So honestly, I don't. Growing up, we I only gave two to three dollars every Sunday, mm-hmm. right? That's my parents gave me that, and that was about it. And it wasn't until I started making my own money and studying. Okay, like, I gotta trust to your point that this tenth, mm-hmm. I'm gonna trust that I, I can survive off the ninety. And give this to Christ, um, which I think is the misconception that a lot of people think. We're like, obviously, God doesn't need our money, but that tenth, mm-hmm. honestly, to to your point, and we, I'm sure we'll discuss that later on, mm-hmm. is actually a budgeting tool, right? If God is saying, "Give me tenth," mm-hmm. you should you got to learn what to do with the ninety, mm-hmm. right? Um, I think that's what we need to start focusing on. So I never, I knew to give to church, but I didn't know the tenth and what it meant. It's just. You're a believer. You give to the church. I never knew what the church did with the money, kind of thing. Right, Cause, right. Because we we're only in church on Sunday, so I'm like, okay, is it just for the lights on Sunday? <laughs> right, <laughs> kind of thing. So yeah, now that's a good. That's good as far as like knowing what to do, but not knowing why. I feel like that's a common yeah. thing yeah. within the yeah, faith and, in general. Yeah, like it's yeah. a lot of people. That's why I want to do this episode. A lot of people here, here do this. Here, <laughs> take this scripture. It's, it's going to change your life, and it's like. Okay, that's cool. If you didn't teach me how to yeah. apply it, then yeah, application. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. what about you, Shahid? I mean, my my household was a little bit mixed because my dad was Muslim, and my mom was she essentially got into church, became you know Christian. So she she managed the ten percent, but my dad managed the ninety. Mm. 
So like he, you know, he really wasn't for church and tithe and giving everything, but they were in a marriage. So he supported my mom mm-hmm. in that case. But, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know. It's, it's kind of a mix when you yeah. see two people not on the same accord where certain mm-hmm. things you kind of take bits and pieces from both of them. Yeah. So, I, you know, I value the money aspect of making money and seeing my dad do that. Then I understood the importance of a tithe, but it wasn't really into the last five or six years that I really started to really tithe. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would give twenty dollars or all right, let me see what I got in my wallet. Yeah, you know, yeah. one of those that mm-hmm. every once in a while I'll do ten percent if I'm like really like, Lord, I need a blessing, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's ten percent, yeah. you know. But other than that, no, I, I really didn't follow through. It really wasn't instilled within us. We saw it by example from my mom, but it wasn't until later on in life, the mm. last couple of years that I've been really, you know, tithing. So what made you what made you uh, convicted in that area from going from like, because I mean, a lot of people, you, you can almost begin treating your tithes or offering like a, almost like God's a genie. Like if I put this in, I'm going to get, yeah. like, I'm going to yeah. get something out. You try to manipulate, you know, you know we often hear like, if you have a need, sow a seed or do this. Mm-hmm. And, and that's true because God has a <laughs> God has a law that. of reaping and sowing. Yes, he does. Right? Mm-hmm. But I can't manipulate circumstances to try to get money out of anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And really would allow for me, God just opened my eyes that either, you know, it was really a trust exercise more than, more than finances or anything. Mm-hmm. Like the finances already jacked up. Might as well just do the 10%. <laughs> exactly. Right. 10% ain't going to make it that much less. Right. Right. Yeah. You might as well just right. try to see. And then yeah. it got to the point where it was like, okay, this is working. And um, you start to manage the, the 90% a, a lot better. But it was it was more of a trust exercise for mm-hmm. me. And it was a testing of my faith, utilizing mm-hmm. something that was of high and important value uh, to me. And that, that was it was more of a surrender. So. But what's not spoken of is you talk about the, the law of sowing and reaping. Like to that point, like you you can't control when you reap, nope. and you can't mm. like you don't know how. That's right? true. It, 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 he's not true. obligated to because you give him ten percent of your money. He got to bless you back in money too. Mm. Yeah, and he can bless you. You know, sustaining health, sustaining right. life, sustaining your personal growth. Right. With him, it's so many things that people miss when it comes to reaping and sowing and really when it comes down to giving and honoring god through your tithe and or anything else that you do it's really about the heart posture Mm -hmm. right um something that my father taught me growing up in terms of giving um and it's something that my grandma his mother taught him is that when you give bills specifically you know offering tithes get for unfolded and a lot of people you know they may it, it could be you know just something from a thought process perspective, but Mm -hmm. it's like when you're giving that bill folded up, it's like you're giving half heartedly. Mm -hmm. You know, when you unfold it, you're giving him you're giving him your all type of thing. So I always that's something that always stuck with me in terms of like the heart posture that we should have when following through on God's word. Word. Um because, you know, it's not it's not essentially what we do, it's why we do it. So God is assessing the heart and then it's like like you said, from from the standpoint of giving, a lot of people miss is like, oh, I I'm gonna give this, like I'm gonna reap, you know, this back or or whatever. It's never about that. It's you know, at a certain point, it's like, you know, do you love God enough to just to just honor Him? Yeah. You know what I'm saying, and, and trust Him. That's you real, know? bro. It reminds me of like Cain and Abel. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm gonna I'm just read a quick part of it, but read the whole thing, you know, at the crib. But Genesis chapter four, uh, you know. Cain, Adam, and Eve, you know, they did the thing, yum, 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 yum. Then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> then, then they gave birth to Cain, right? Then later, yum, yum, yum again. Then they gave birth to Abel, right? Yep. So it says in verse 2, Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the, of the soil as an offering to the Lord, and Abel also brought an offering. Fat portions from some of the firstborn of the flock. Mm-hmm. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his, and his face was downcast. So I was like, you know, we all kind of, when you first read it, you're like, okay, what's the reason? It looked look like they both gave at the end of the day. Mm. But it's, it's like, it says Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil, mm. like just some. We don't know which ones. It don't sound like they was the best. 
Nope. And then on the other end, you got Abel, who brought fat portions of the firstborn of mm-hmm. the flock. So he brought the best of the best, mm-hmm. like, and so the best of the the first, the initial. And so when you when you when we read that, um, it's a it's a call to as Jason was getting at, not just what we give. How we give? Do we give God our best? Are we giving reluctantly? Are we just like I'm gonna just give because I'm supposed to give? Or you know, yeah. treating it treating it like like it's a, a slot machine. Like yeah. if I put it, in enough, I'm gonna get something out. Yeah, yeah, it matters. Like His Word says, like don't give begrudgingly. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying give cheerfully. Facts. Um, so I mean, the attitude with giving matters. Like if, you, if you're gonna give with the standpoint of. You know, I'm gonna give just like you said, just because I have to. You might yeah. as well not not do it. Facts. You, know it, you better. It'd be better for you just keep it. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. So okay. So let's talk about because we in this room at this point at least have a healthy understanding of giving tithes offering, right? Excuse me. Everybody does not. So let's talk about that, right? Let's talk about one the the reality of it because some of the people in their reluctancy is valid right Mm -hmm. some of it is it has been a abuse or misuse or manipulation of scripture for sure um and so even when i go to the barbershop a lot like that's one of the things that comes up a lot is if i go to church they're gonna try to get me to give and not only are they gonna try to get me to give they're gonna take up five offerings they're gonna say every (laughs) scripture in the book and so their perspective is when I go to church, I get manipulated to give money. Valid. Some of it is valid, right? I, I mean, I think we've all seen that happen. So for someone watching, how do we determine what is, okay, a true, honest prompting to give to the Lord versus you're manipulating me? You're trying to manipulate me. Well, well I'll say this, right? And both sides <laughs> are true, right? Right. <laughs> To some extent, it's a cop out if you're thinking the church is after your money all the time. Appreciate it. Um, appreciate it, because you, you, you're not obligated to give, mm-hmm. right? Like, and I've recently learned, like, listen, you, a lot of people tithe towards, you know, if they go to a club, nightclub, or they eat Chick Fil A, like that's your tithe, right? You do that every week. Mm-hmm. So it, we got to get rid of that kind of thought process. Mm-hmm. But it's your heart postures that we've been mentioning that you should give because honestly, the greatest thing that you can reap is the grace and mercy of God. Sit. So the easiest thing for you to do is say, listen, if if a, a loving God is saying, just give me 10%, and realistically speaking, right, in the Old Testament, the tithe was just like a tax. Mm-hmm. They operated in a theocracy, so it kind of was for the you know inheritance for, for the priests and the Levites, so like the daily operations of the kingdom mm-hmm. and to support orphans and widows. So you're actually like helping out an organizational business. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So you should go where you f- where you feel like the funds are being used appropriately. And, and honestly, I think churches, all churches should provide the financials of, you know, the organization so you know mm-hmm. where the money is going. Gotcha. I think a lot of churches that don't do that, I mean, I'm not saying they're doing anything wrong, but they should be able to have some level of transparency to say, hey, this is where the money is going. Especially. Right. Um, but, t- and I used to think the same way too, but here's the thing. You go to Chick-fil-A and you eat from them and you walk out, they coming after you. You can go <laughs> like into church what, and without eat from paying, church. Yeah. yeah. You go right. to church for, for 10 years and not pay a dime. Like they might, you know, name drop you or something like that during a <laughs> sermon. Which isn't right either. Which, but, oh, hundred percent, hundred percent correct. But outside of that, I mean, that, that's, that's an extreme yeah. case, right? Yeah, yeah. But most of the time, you can just walk out and, and, and be good. Yeah. So I just think we got to realize, like, the concept of the tithe is just your tenth that goes towards the uh, building of the kingdom and the people that works in it and the people that's in need, and it should go towards that. Mm-hmm. So it's like I'm giving, to, I'm giving to God through the church. Yeah. Like, and yeah. in, 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 in my giving, I help the church operate. That's one of the ways I look at it, too, is just like, I mean, at the end of the day, like you said, you go anywhere and you consume anything, there's, it comes with that cost. Like, at the end of the day, if nobody gave money to the church, how's the church going to run? Like, it's not a, you know what I'm saying? Right. We could talk about different revenue, streams of revenue uh, within ministry or within just Christianity a little bit later. But at the end of the day, it's like, 
you came, you ate spiritually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, so that seed. At the same time, though, how do we recognize like, okay, this is beyond that. This because yeah. we've all, I, f I feel like we've all been to a church and been like, oh yeah, this is beyond just you trying to prompt me to do what I'm supposed mm -hmm. to do. Yeah. I think I think one thing is if your heart is prompting in that way where you're questioning, it's beyond the tithe. It's about the ministry in general. So if this was a once and a one time occurrence, give grace because mm -hmm. you know, there may be a dire need in the way that ministry, pastor, ministers may be expressing it. You may hear the desperation, you may hear the the strong unction because there may be a, a real need. If this is every week, if this is every month, if this is an occurrence that yeah. you you feel like you're being manipulated, you just might be in the wrong ministry. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if the church has been good to you the entire time, there's been no issues, there's been no uh, promptings of manipulation or any underhanded things happening, and then this one occurrence makes you feel some type of way, give grace. Pray, pray to it, Lord. You know, I'm sensing something in my heart. I'm lifting it to you because I don't have the background understanding of what's happening ministry wise. Mm -hmm. But if this is happening all the time and you feel like there's a, a certain manipulation happening specifically around tithe or anything else, you need to open your eyes and see if this is actually the ministry that you need to be uh, planted in. So I, I think it raises a red flag just in general. And mm -hmm. that particular cause might be, you know, the tug you need to kind of open your eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. And to release real quick, to release the stronghold too, right? Like, and I don't know why I'm not to say this. Not paying your tithes and offering in church doesn't mean you're going to go to hell. I That's think people got to know that because yeah. it's like, it's like that kind of religious legalism kind of yeah. thing. Like, give generously. Don't give out of, out of compulsion. And you should give, right? Mm -hmm. Especially if you believe in it. Sure. But it's not like if I don't do this, like I'm not right with God, and like I'm, you know, when I die, I may not go. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, put that to rest. Saved by faith, not yeah. by works. Yeah. yeah. And another thing, I don't know any particular place where you utilize a, a service or product and you're not charged for it. Facts. So, like, even if you're walking down the street or you go to a, a quote unquote free public school, you're paying taxes <laughs> yeah, for that service. Like, there's, I can't think of one place where you're not being charged or you're offering some type of monetary exchange for the service. Mm -hmm. you know? Anywhere. Yeah. So, like, everything costs. Everything yeah. costs. So, it's like, we, of course, we should hold the church to a higher standard of uh, stewarding over those costs and how it's being communicated. But, there's not one place on earth that you can go that you're not being charged in one way or another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one thing that that comes up often is, and and they be going <laughs> there is, God told me that fifty of y'all need to sow X amount of dollars. <laughs> that, right. Uh, yeah. So well, many times I've heard heard that man. How okay? I'm in a church, and I go to church, and I hear the pastor say. I feel fifty of y'all need to sell a thousand dollars. How? Because again, I think we're at a point where we, we're able to spiritually discern mm -hmm. whether it is. But for somebody that is not there, how? Like, okay, do I do it? Or maybe not, let's take let's let's say it's not a thousand. Let's mm -hmm. bring it down. A hundred y'all supposed to give a hundred dollars, mm -hmm. right? Because that's probably more reasonable for the, for most people. Mm -hmm. Do I do it out of obedience? Do I like what do I do I pray? How do we how do we navigate that? Well, well, That's you know, good. the word says test the spirit is by the spirit, mm -hmm. right? So it is about discerning, okay, is this the voice of God or is this something else, mm -hmm. right? I'm not going to call it anything. It's, it could be something else other than the voice of God. So Case in point, you really have to have a spirit of discernment when it comes to those situations. But in in the same breath, too, again, like it, it, it can turn people away mm -hmm. because it's like, you know, you've got all this good food, it's good spiritual food. And, you know, specifically, it's, you know, a lot, some of the time it's, you know, it's what God is saying. But, Sometimes it's for somebody, especially a new believer, it's tough to it's tough to discern. 
um, which uh, if, you, if they're not in the word or if somebody's not teaching them the concept of giving and, you know, what I was saying about discerning the spirits by the spirit, mm -hmm. it gets a little gets a little fuzzy, you yeah. know, so. It's yeah. real. It's, it may be tough for a babe in Christ. So you, let's say you, you you just received salvation, you're saved. I'm a month in, I'm on mm -hmm. fire for the Lord. I got all this zeal and I want to do right and be obedient. And maybe you're not at the place where you have that level of discernment to really even know what that means, right? Mm -hmm. Because discernment might be new vernacular for you. It's like, what is discernment? Yeah. yeah. Right? Because you got a lot. I think the, the challenge is a lot of people who are in church, everyone here is obviously educated by the intros, but you have a lot of people who are just laymen, like just everyday people who yeah. just don't know, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, me personally, I, I don't have the scripture for I'm just going to say it. I'm not sure if God would prompt you to give something that you don't have. Wisdom. Right? So sure. having yeah. the wisdom. So if it's like, all right, my account is at $147, but I got a little bit in my savings. Is he asking me to tap into my savings that I really don't have? And I got the car payment coming tomorrow. And then mm -hmm. it's like, okay, do I just give it and hope that I get a check in the mail in mm -hmm. return? Sometimes he'll test you like that. Sometimes though. he will no, test think, you like yeah, that. Yeah, I, right? I think he can. He can. But yeah. But I, I think it's using the wisdom and mm -hmm. I, I don't know, man, it's, it's tricky. You know, I think sometimes people are being manipulated in mm -hmm. that case. And for those who may have been manipulated, who may have given uh, under anything other than the spirit of God, God sees that and he avenges that and he mm -hmm. takes yes, care he of us. So I think yeah. in, in instances where I don't know, where I, I truly don't know, I may have been in that same situation Lord, with the measure of faith that I have, I'm giving this unto you. Mm -hmm. If I'm wrong, if I'm in a bad situation, I just trust you're going to help reconcile it on the back end. Yeah. No, I, I think the same thing. Like, I've been in situations where I've been in places and it's like, give this much. I feel the Lord is saying, give this amount. And there's times where I'm like, there's times where I, I even felt that it wasn't right. And I mm -hmm. still was like. God, okay, I'm giving this to you, God. I'm not giving this to the to the person that prompted it. Um, and there's also times where I'm like, mm, not today, right? Yeah. Based on, and this is prayer. This is me saying, okay, Lord, I don't know if this is what it like how I how I'm sensing it. Um, and and then you know, as Jason said, like the the Bible, you know, lists spiritual gifts, and one is um, discernment <clears throat> of spirits or or distinguishing of spirits, you know, um, and so. That is literally the the ability to determine whether something is coming from the spirit of God or something else, and so pray and, and desire that gift, right? God, uh, Paul said, you know, mm -hmm. desire the gifts, like you know, eagerly desire the gifts, mm -hmm. um, and so with that, like just pray, like Lord, I feel like I'm not able to tell what's good and what's bad. Help me, That's right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like the Holy yeah. Spirit will help you and be it. Like eventually, you'll be able to learn like what He's saying, and you'll be able to say, "Nah, that ain't it." Or mm -hmm. yeah, okay, but, yeah, okay. And so, um, if that is you, you know, as Shahid said, I, 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 I believe, even if it wasn't from God and you gave to the Lord, you would still be blessed. Amen. And, yeah. and like Jerome said, I, I like that point. You don't always. Reap in the same way or with the same measure that you sow, meaning uh, the same type of thing, yeah. right? Like, that's that's good. If you sow $100, that don't mean you're going to get, even if we say 30, 60, 100 fold, right? right? That doesn't mean you're going to get, get three hundred times the 60. Right. All right, come back. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's how, that's how people think about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, but also, too, again, you know, the word says, um, whatever measure you you give, so shall you reap. And it also says, um, you know, you're reaping good measure. Mm -hmm. Press down, shaking together, with rubbing nose. Yeah, your man given to thy bosom. And yeah. it, it still it still doesn't have, doesn't have to be money. It could be a form of, you know, exaltation from your humility. It could, like I say, it could be anything. Yeah, you know, but person. but you got to yeah. So so your expectation has to be open more than just the finances. That's good. But you always won't you won't always get it correct too, right? So like a, a lot of times mm -hmm. when that happens is like in the moment. Yeah. So you may miss it. But again, if God knows your heart and knows your intention, 
you got to trust that he knows your heart and your intention and he'll come mm-hmm. back. He prick your heart again to give it again. If you say, Lord, I got it wrong, you bring it, you give it next week. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now he'll, he'll prick at you. if you, Yeah. If you but it, it takes wrong. time. You know, like you, you're never at the point of arrival, but I, I believe at this level of life that I'm at, scripture says that wisdom is a principal thing. Mm-hmm. Right. So sometimes the Lord will prick your heart to give as a, as a, as a leap of faith. But sometimes if to your point, your example, like if you, not sure how you're gonna pay your bills, and you you're behind on this, this, and that, and they and they're saying give a thousand dollars, and like that's literally like all that I have, or you don't have that much, or you don't have that much. Yeah. And yeah. You're like, well, I'm going. Cause a lot of times we get like caught up in emotion yeah. too. Like, mm-hmm. it's like yeah. it's like it's hard in the moment. Like, is this really God? It's like yeah, oh, essentially performance. Like, I, I got to be one of these hundred people to give this money. Mm. And and you know, and it's sad people would exploit. An actual move of God for, yeah. for, for oh yeah, that. Mm-hmm. desperate times, yeah. desperate measures. Man. If you don't do it now, the, the heavens are going to close, and you don't make your deposit, yeah. and this and this, and it's like <laughs> that's, right, not yeah, that's, that's, that's not scripture. This, this not, is it's not scripture. <laughs> yeah. yeah no. So man, okay, that's good because so there is an abuse. There is and has been an abuse of scripture, right? Um, that's why it says study to show yourself approved, right? Mm-hmm. That you may be able to rightly divide the word of truth. Um, and I, I would just say that also comes with the ability to understand if it's being divided properly. And so if I don't know the word and, you know, like you said, I'm a babe in Christ. If I don't know the word and a man of God or a woman of God is saying this to, to a new Christian, Anybody on the on on the stage? That's the word of God. Is like, leaning it's, on it's, that. It's, it's almost as if God said yeah, that. It's, it's no. Thus says the Lord to you, right? right? Yeah. And so that's why it's so important. Even even you know, as a young Christian, or maybe not just maybe not a young Christian, but just, you're just learning certain things um, to study, to to pray, to seek wisdom, right? Um, man, are you getting get understanding? And so it's just like, yo, if if you see something, um, pray. Seek the word about it, and then also um, find people that you can trust that say like, okay, like I, I had this, I go to this church, blah blah blah, whatever. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and find people you can trust and, and be able to to pray with you and I guide you through that. Something else that because of church in the way that it's structured, there there isn't a there isn't a you know, a sounding board in real time, right? So you hear something that a pastor or minister may say, it's not like, hey, let me ask you a question about that, like mm-hmm. in real time in a classroom setting. Yeah. And I think that if you're in that in that situation and there is a prompt, there is a specific moment to sow, wait till after service, say, Lord, mm-hmm. I'm committed to give to you, but I have some questions. I'm mm-hmm. going to seek some clarity or understanding. Ask the minister, hey, look, when you ask this, I'm new or I'm not familiar with this concept. Mm-hmm. Can you show me in scripture like an That's example? Good. Or can That's you good. can you explain to me how is this particular moment where you're asking for a thousand, five thousand dollars, a hundred people to sell five hundred? Mm-hmm. Can you give me an example of that in scripture that I can see? That's good. Because I'm new and I this sounds different from a regular tithe. Is this something else? Mm-hmm. Is this a different type of offering? Can you explain to me what is this moment that seems a little bit different yeah. from your typical collection plate moment? Just ask the question. And then, you know, if you don't have a resolve, even with that follow up question yeah, or like, hey, you know, give yourself give yourself grace, especially if you're new or you don't understand to get the understanding that you need. Yeah. And 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 know and understand that God is the one who gives the increase. Mm-hmm. Like your supply comes from God. Fact. So Lord, if I miss this moment, like forgive me in my ignorance, in my mm-hmm. unbelief, or just in my skepticism, but I really want to understand what this is and I want to understand your heart. Yeah. So, like give me a day. You know, like yeah. I think that's okay. No, that's good. And I and into that with that, like with grace comes God's all knowingness, right? His his sovereignty, yep. his, his uh omniscience, right? He knows if you didn't do the right thing and you had the right heart, he's not gonna what kind of father is gonna be like Sickness. right, right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My wrath a plague. Be you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like if, if he knew it's different between if, if you have a bad heart and you're just like, I'm not giving versus 
uh, I don't know, and you tried to discern mm-hmm. and understand, and you just didn't do the right thing, that's totally different than somebody that's just like, I'm not giving. Yeah. And God knows that. So give, give yourself that grace, man. Yeah. Amen. And I think on the other side of giving, um, like I think about in Acts chapter 10, it talks about Cornelius, who uh, gave, he gave often, like I'm going I'm to read part of it, uh, verse, this is Acts chapter 10, verse 2. Um, I'll read the first, start from the beginning. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion, in which, in, in what was known as the Italian regiment. He was, he and all his family were devout and God fearing. He gave generously, generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius, Cornelius, Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? He asked. The angel answered, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before Mm -hmm. God. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon, who's also called Peter. Blah, blah, blah. It keeps going, right? Mm -hmm. He says, the angel says, your gifts, right, have Mm -hmm. come up as a memorial before God. And I, I thought that was interesting. Like the first time I read it, I'm like, what does that mean? And he's like, literally like, if you think about it, a memorial is a tribute mm-hmm. to something. And so it's like literally his gifts, his giving to the poor came up to God as this this tribute to him, right? It's mm-hmm. done to people. Like he gave to the poor, but he gave it to God. Mm-hmm. And because of that, God decided to use him um, to really become one of the first people to help a move of God where the church was not just seen as just for the Jews. Um, and so... The point is, in your giving, those that give with the right heart, God will use, yeah. right? He'll see that and he'll say, okay, I've seen you've been a good steward. I've seen uh, you, you've you been giving faithfully. Um, and so I would decide to use those. And so let's talk about like giving outside of church. Because I know some people say like, my tithe doesn't need to be in church. That's not what the word says. <laughs> like, uh, some people say... <laughs> If I have 10%, if I have $100, right, 10% of that, $10. Whether I give it to church or whether I give it to the man on on the corner, I gave as unto the Lord. Yeah, that's not what the word says. And I'm um, referencing Malachi 3 and 10. It says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there might be meat in mine house. Mm-hmm. Improve me now here with say the Lord of hosts if, if I will not open up the windows of heaven pour out you a blessing that there shall not be room enough for you to receive he he specifically mm-hmm. named the church yeah and um you know so and you know that's just a spirit led thing that you said my my pastor referenced that some weeks ago it just kind of came up in my remembrance where and that's where people kind of get to see it it's like. Yeah, I'm giving, but you know, I don't have to give to the church. Like, well, no, the word says, mm-hmm. you know, give to the storehouse. And now your offering, or like what you give to other people, that's different. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And that, and that, in terms of what you're responding to, in terms of God leading you a certain direction to give somebody a love offering for you know specific services, or um, you know, or helping somebody out. Again, being led by the heart of God, you know, God sees that too. Mm-hmm. But so far as ties, He's very specific about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, here's the thing, right? We like it goes to Shah's like one of his first points. If it's if it's that much of a burden for you to give to Don't the church, it. like you should probably reconsider what type of church you're going to. Then, mm-hmm. Honestly, because mm-hmm. if if or, it's or like your heart, or your, or your heart, heart. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But if it's like okay, the tenth, I don't want to give to this spot. Yeah. I'm gonna go to here. It's like to you, is it the church? Is it you? And then you got to fix that thing. Up. It's a bigger issue than that because it's not. It's not about the like the money. And I, I hope throughout this podcast we get to the point of like talking about the ninety percent. Mm-hmm. That's a whole different mm-hmm. conversation. Okay. But the ten percent, like it's like it's yeah, the money is whatever has your heart right. Yeah, where your treasure is, but your treasure mm-hmm. could also be like your time and yep. your your gifts and your talents and abilities to help the kingdom as well. Mm-hmm. That's real. So. Let's talk about the 90 then. <laughs> Jerome. <laughs> Bird, Birdman. Hand <laughs> 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 I 
how how do we how do we steward the ninety? Because and, and we're talking about from all angles. We're talking about from the wealthy man watching this, hmm. wealthy woman watching this, and we're also talking about the person that they might not even they don't even have enough to pay the Wi Fi bill that they watching this on. Like next month they might not even be able to watch no more. True. So <laughs> how do we manage that from a budgeting, spiritual, like talk about from any standpoint? I'm sure we all got our opinions yeah. on this, right? And I'll keep it brief, but I'm sure we end up going deeper into it. I, I'll start off with this, right? I think th we'll only be a, as effective with the 90% it, as, as our level, our eye set when it comes to the perception of how God truly is, right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. Jesus was not poor, mm -hmm. right? So you can... Once we separate the abundant mindset from the scarcity mindset, we'll be able to operate to say, okay, I am able to multiply that 90% to live off of. And I think from like a wealth standpoint, realistically speaking, you're not good with your money if when you give 10%, like you got to, like the whole 90 you got to live off of, mm -hmm. the ultimate objective should be able to flip it where you could, you could still ball and everything with the 10% and mm -hmm. give away the, the 90. Mm -hmm. And uh, scripture says, you know, you know, you should invest in seven yet eight ventures because you never know, you know, when scarcity is going to come. Right. So just from the sake of budgeting, right, we talked about, if you have your 100%, we talked about the 10%, which is to give to God. But with Joseph and Pharaoh, he said to save one-fifth, which is 20%. Mm -hmm. Just off that, 30, that's, you know what to do with the 30% of your money. 70% yeah. is yet to be seen, but it's your wants and needs. And what I tend to study is how... Jewish culture manages their money, right? Like, and they they do it in jars, you know, ten percent mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. charity, and you know that sort of thing. We can get into it, but I I, I personally don't care how much. Like, if you just give ten percent, you don't know what to do with the ninety percent. Like, I don't care how many tongues you speak and how many demons you cast out. You're just gonna be a broke tire. <laughs> yeah, like you you, you got it. You got it. This is look, cool. yeah. look how funny, like with the parables of talents, right? Like, mm -hmm. you, you understand how crazy it is that the one that got called lazy and slothful was the one that came back with the same amount. Mm -hmm. like he didn't come back with less. Yeah. The same amount he came back with, he got called lazy. Which means to tell me the master was considering him to be, if he was a good steward, he would multiply what he had. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, we get so focused on, on, on those individuals that we neglect to even pay attention to the master, right? Like, we got to operate yeah. like him. Like, he was going out of town and he had... Yeah. Folks multiplying his money for him. Yeah, facts. We got to start thinking like that as opposed to like, I just don't want to be the one lazy mm. servant. Yeah. And there's so many, like, <sighs> I, I know we're going to go in, but like, yo, there's, there's yeah, more yeah. scriptures in the Bible about money than there is about prayer. Facts. Yeah. Like, so we got to, if Bible says that money money solves all things, mm -hmm. Bible says that. We got to discuss that more. Yeah. Um, yeah, to your point, I mean, it's, you know, you can go back all the way to the beginning. God made man to take dominion over the land and till it. What, what does that mean? So God wants us to be the the earth is uh, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Mm -hmm. But if He told us to take dominion over the land, that means He wants us to take care of, care of it for a season. Mm -hmm. What He's given unto us for a season. And so, to your point, you, you know, like I said, spirit led because those same two. Instances Joseph um, interpreting the dream for Pharaoh, and then the parable with the five talents, uh, five talents, two talents, and the one. That was that's that's my favorite parable. It's it's a it's a call to stewardship. Mm -hmm. You know, God doesn't want you to leave this earth and what He's giving to you the same. Um, and he wants you to increase that and leave it better off than what you left it. You know, Jesus even when He was coming up. Jesus grew in stature and in wisdom. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and gained favor with God and yeah. and with man yeah. and with man. So that's our expectation. That's his expectation of us as well. Is that yeah, you may not have this this vast amount of knowledge of of how to manage money, how to budget, how to invest, but the, we we press our stories. You didn't at one point. I didn't at one point. Mm -hmm. You know, but. You know that's that's all called to get better, and to and to put those things into practice, right? Mm -hmm. While we're Amen. still here, you know what I'm saying. 
Um, so it just really comes down to, you know, the discipline, you know, staying, staying faithful um, to that. And, and specifically when it comes to there's this probably even more, you know, how you can apply scripture to finance and what people might think. And oh, yeah. we'll, we'll probably, you know, hopefully we can get to more of the nuance of financial planning, not just from the management standpoint, but also, yeah. you know, from a from a legacy standpoint. Um, as well, which is very, you know, a big reason why I'm an advisor now, just from personal experience. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, every, every, in, in in the season that we're in, in terms of taking dominion, you know, we have to be good stewards. And um, so we can't make the excuse of where we are now. You know, we got to seek him and he'll, you know, he'll increase us in that knowledge to, to practice it. And you know, I got yeah. two practical things. Yeah. So one of the things that I do as a part of my job and as an economic developer is to study demographics. So like people, their household incomes, where they live, their education and the like. And for those who are kind of your U.S. listeners, there's MIT, which is, you know, college. Um, for those who may not be familiar if you're in other parts of the world, um, MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology is one of the the top universities in America, and they put out this thing called the Living Wage Index. And you can basically go to your state, find your county, and they break out statistically, whether you're a single person with one child, two children, three children, or if you're in a two-person household and one person works, mm -hmm. if you're in a two-person household and both of you work, and there's a whole like matrix that shows mm -hmm. you if you live mm -hmm. in this county, you have to make X amount of dollars in order to have a livable wage. Mm -hmm. And most people don't know. So they may they may grow up in a small town and say, oh, I want to move to Charlotte because it's a big city in the South. Yeah. And they were making $10, $12 an hour in their old town. And then they're like, well, I could just make 15 because that's cool. Not knowing that you need to make 20 in order to live in this right. area. Mm -hmm. Most people don't know what they're supposed to make mm -hmm. in order to have a livable wage. So, and then there's also like, uh, there's rules of thumbs. You shouldn't be spending more than 30% of your income on housing, mm -hmm. right? So there's there's just some numerical things that, yeah. of course, they can go further into. And then on a, the second note that I want to make, you don't know how to steward the 90 if you don't know who you are, mm. right? If if, you, if you're running this, this media company and you have a Christian podcast and you tithe your 10%, but every time I pull up, you you out doing something else with your 90 and you're not buying equipment, you're not investing in your company, mm -hmm. you don't know who you truly are. Mm -hmm. You know who you are. You know what you're called to do. Yeah. So it's not that I'm mismanaging or blowing my money. The money has an assignment. Mm -hmm. That 90% has an assignment. That's good. My assignment yeah. is I need to continue to grow this platform That's to make good. sure I give God glory worldwide through the technology and through this particular platform. So yeah. I'm investing in microphone, time, cameras, et cetera. So you know what to do with the 90 because you know who you are and you know what you're called to do. Mm. Some people, they mismanage the 90. I raised my, both of my hands because mm -hmm. I didn't know who I was in Christ and I didn't know the assignment that I had on my life and I didn't take those things as serious. So it's easy to mismanage the 90 mm -hmm. if you don't know what the assignment is for that money. That's yeah. good. I yeah. like what you said that that like the 90, I mean, money in general has an assignment. So that that makes it, when God prompts me to give to somebody, that makes it much easier when I think about it. Like this money, it's not really mine for real. It's not. It, it's, it's literally, it had an assignment and mm -hmm. okay, this particular assignment was to give to somebody. Yep. This particular assignment was to buy this equipment. Mm -hmm. This particular assignment was to store it and save it yeah. for the future. Oh, so that's good. Yeah. Amen. The flip side of that, too, is <clears throat> people look at money as the end all be all. So, you know, you know, the scripture says for the love of money is the root, root of evil. You mm -hmm. know, some people put things to work just for the sake of having money. But like you said, it has an assignment. It's it's a tool. It's yeah, a, tool. a tool. Um, and I've seen just from our generation, right? Like in pretty, not, I wouldn't say pretty, well, yeah, it's pretty common. You know, money is like a form of adultery to, to some. It's like, 
you know, I'm going to chase the bag. But to what end? Mm -hmm. To what end? Just so you can get this house, you can get this car and, you know, get on, get on Instagram. I mean, I mean, what's what's right. the pur what's the purpose of this? Like, what's the what's what's the end? What's the end all be? What's the goal that you're trying to accomplish? Or what's the assignment that you have with this yeah. with this money? And I feel like from the standpoint of not just budgeting, but just again planning in general, is where that really starts to mm -hmm. become a focal point. It should become a focal point. It's like you know you're not gonna. Like we we all say we're not gonna be here forever, you know. what I'm saying whether okay. whether it's from our our one time appointment of death or rapture of the church, um, we we can't take that currency with us. It has to nope. fulfill something after we're gone. Because I mean, you know, it's it's a, it's a tool that's here on earth. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's the other side of it too. Is like people, you know, kind of look at money as like a status thing, or like just you know, more money I have, the more. You know, I'm exalted, which, you know, it's a form of idolatry. Mm -hmm. You got to ask yourself, right? There's, um, I forget who said this, but they said, you, based off your perception of money, right? Poor people think money is simply just to pay bills. Mm. Middle class people think money is to get more credit to buy more stuff that they can't afford. Mm -hmm. And the wealthy, they use their money to generate more assets, to get more assets, which will fund the lifestyle that they want. Mm -hmm. And we all believers right here, we got to uh, begin discussing what that means for us, right? Again, we've established the 10%, but that 90%, you're held responsible for that as well too, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. a good man leaving inheritance for his children children. You got to do that based off the 90. And the funny thing is, scripture also says that what that inheritance is, is houses and riches. That's all scriptures. Like yeah. and money, if money solves all things, we should talk about it more, especially in the body of Christ, on how to generate, how to multiply those assets yep. that we could be generous on every occasion. Because the funny thing is, most most of the the things that the body of Christ prays for, there's somebody walking this earth that has the resources to to yep. fix it. Mm -hmm. yep. Which leads me to believe, right? And this is an honest question that the Lord woke me up one night with. If money was not an issue, how would our prayer life change? Mm. If money was not an issue, because we, wow. we are, we're in programs together. We know that there's people out there that has the financial resources. Like literally we know one person that, that said she's been praying for the Lord to fire her from her job because she has finances already, mm -hmm. that she can actually step out on faith and do what she's called to do. Wow. So wow. if money was not an issue. Pray is a totally different. Seriously. Nah. Like, how, <laughs> how would you really Please let me get fired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just really yeah. Please, please, please just make it known. Just yeah. If you think about it, look at like wow. yeah. health. Uh, granted, like I I have a friend um, that's battling cancer, right? He has brain cancer and is traveling to his uh, lungs and lymph nodes. Mm. Lord, I need your supernatural for that. So I'm praying for that. But he also is doing very, very well financially that he has the world's best doctor taking care of him. Mm -hmm. So that's an insulator. So it gives him some peace. If he didn't have that, that's an entirely different prayer. Now I'm looking for miracle signs and wonders and mm -hmm. I'm still yeah. looking for it. Mm -hmm. But the Lord allowed him to have individuals yeah. that's established to yeah. fix those things. Yeah. And that's all essentially what money is, is to be able to, it's, it's, it's currency, cool. right? A yeah. current. Yeah. It's just supposed to flow and go somewhere. Yeah. yeah. It's good. Okay, bro. So this scripture, um, because in church and culture, you, you have two ends of the spectrum. You have the poverty mindset, but then you have this surplus surplus mindset where it's like everybody in the church needs to be rich. And then this one is, it's just everybody's poor, right? Mm -hmm. Meek. Yeah. So this scripture in Proverbs chapter 30, it says, verse 8, keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, mm -hmm. but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. Mm -hmm. And so I believe when it's saying riches, it's not saying don't allow me to get wealthy, right? Riches and wealth, I, I, I believe in this context are different in the sense of this is saying, Give me neither poverty, don't allow me to be poor, but also don't allow me to have too much. Mm -hmm. Because I think every person has a threshold for their level of stewardship. Yep. So uh, I think it was Bill Johnson. He was asked a question like, how much money is too much money? 
He said, whatever amount causes you to not be able to trust God. And I was like, hmm, that's yeah, a good point. Yeah. For somebody, it might be literally $100 might be too much. They would go crazy and not, they would they would disown the Lord, right? Yeah. As it says. Oh, yeah. Wait till tax season. No, nah, facts. <laughs> facts. <laughs> they don't forget about ties and everything. I'm facts. running it up. Here's that tax return. Here come yeah, back. Facts. <laughs> So it's like I think even even in church, it's not always communicated properly to where the the goal you know oftentimes is like everybody everybody's gonna be wealthy, and the reality of it is like we talked about based on our level of stewardship, everybody can't be wealthy or else they'd be dangerous. Yeah. They they would literally have the potential to to. Give up their salvation. Yeah, yeah. Like some some people, I, I I truly believe that there are people that if they had too much money, they wouldn't be saved anymore. Like they would, mm. they would, yeah. they would look to other things. They they wouldn't oh, yeah. realize that they needed God. It happens so, to celebrities and athletes, yeah, all and people and business people all the time, bro. I, Everyday I, people who come up. I mean, draft night. You now you got five million dollars in your account mm -hmm. because you're a good basketball player, football player, and you come from the sticks. And then all of a sudden, it's like your whole world crumbles because yeah. you, got, you, got too much. you got yeah. too much. Too it, much. It happens to people all the time. The lottery too, right? What they say, lottery like ninety too. some percent of the people they yeah. go back bro. They go back bro. Yeah. 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 Ain't by chance. It's too much, bro. Like I met a uh, I met a guy who, who was homeless uh, maybe last year, a couple years ago. Um, he said, yo, I didn't know how much I realized I needed God until I lost everything. He said, I was doing great. Like, I had this. I had everything I needed. He's like, until I got everything taken away from me, I didn't realize I needed God. So for him, his poverty was actually a blessing. And I know for some people that sounds like, wait, hold up. That's real. I truly believe... In God's sovereignty, He allows some people to be stripped away of their resources oh, yeah. to, in order that their so, their soul may be saved. Yeah, the, the Bible says, "What what is a profit a man to gain Man's the world, whole world lose and soul. lose his soul?" Yeah. And so, in God's sovereignty, in His hand and calling for some people, He says, "You can't have this much, right? You mm -hmm. you you can't." And then on the other end, He says, "Yo, you've been a great steward. Like I'll here, more. here's the here's the world. Like yo, because I know you're gonna do." the right things with it. So, um, any thoughts? I mean, you put money in its proper place, right? Like, yeah. yeah. Love people, use money, not the other way around. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It was an example that I gave in a, in a group. Jerome was there as well. And there were folks were talking about calling and money and making money. And I gave the example of like one of those secret agent movies. You ever mm -hmm. see one like Born Identity or something? Mm -hmm. Like the, the secret agent gets a call and they get the assignment and then they go to some bank and lockbox. There's like a lot of money, a couple passports, a gun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that agent has enough resources that was assigned to him to complete the assignment. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. if the, the agency mm -hmm. sent him money, to complete the assignment, and he was like, I'm about to buy a Ferrari with the, the money mm -hmm. in a lockbox, and he don't have enough funds to get a car, to take the train, to get on the plane, to go to this place, and to survive and do you know, uh, covert missions for a week or two right. to finish the assignment. Shame on him, yeah. Yeah. right? But I think everyone is giving a certain amount for their assignment. Now, if I'm a spy and I'm looking at you and like, yo, why he got... A million in his lockbox, yeah. and I only got ten thousand. Well, his assignment may be more elaborate, yeah. and he's trusted to handle that million to complete his assignment. Yeah. Now, if you're given the resources, you're given everything, and you don't finish the assignment, then yeah, you slothful person. Yeah. You're, you're worse than an unbeliever yeah. mm -hmm. because I gave you resources, I gave you the money. You were given an assignment to complete, which goes back to the identity. If you don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. You don't know your assignment. You're not going to know what the assignment is for that money. Facts. If I don't know what I'm truly meant to do and the agency calls me, it's like, yo, you got this lockbox and I haven't been trained. I haven't been properly equipped. Mm -hmm. If I don't know the repercussions of not fulfilling this mission with the with the resources that were given to me, for that spy, it could be life or death. Mm -hmm. And there's other collateral damage as well. Yeah. So if I don't fulfill this mission... There may be other people who may be impacted because I didn't finish out this assignment with yeah. the resources that were given to me. That's good.
Man, so, okay, let's take it real practical for a second, right? Mm-hmm. And I know everybody's, when it comes to financial planning and budgets and everything, everybody's different, right? But real quick, and each of y'all might have, y'all might have the same or y'all might have different. If I'm watching this, how do I create a budget? Like, I'm talking like percent-wise, what do I spend my money on? Well, I mean, some people use, uh, I think it's the 70 20 10 rule where 70% goes to essential expenses. 20% may go to um, just, you know, just leisure. And then another 10% at least goes to savings. Mm-hmm. Um, it could be like just as. I'm on a Dave Ramsey show. <laughs> <laughs> they start writing them down. Yeah, it could, it, could be, it could be as simple as that just to Word. start. But when it comes to budgeting, it's all about it's knowing about knowing where you stand, right? You know, you can't compare your budget to somebody else's budget. You have to understand. All right, I'm paid this much. I got this. This I have to pay for. This I have to pay for. And then just understanding. Okay, what's left? It's also a realization. Okay, if I go back through this budget, what's essential? What's non essential? Mm-hmm. And with that, that teaches sacrifice as well. Um, how to be frugal, how to do more with less. And so I feel like some people are scared of budgeting because they'll realize or they'll have to look them, they'll self-examine and see, Mm. hey, I'm wasting my money on a lot of things Mm. where it could be going towards, you know, a a savings plan, right? Gotcha. Um, So it's just a matter of putting your faith to work, really. Um, and then once you construct that budget, it's it's like you have to be disciplined enough to maintain it. That's really the basis of any 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 hope of building wealth, because if you can do that, you can then at some point say, OK, I got this amount of surplus. I can put this toward investments. I got you know, I, I got this going. OK, now we're thinking about, you know, how am I saving for retirement? Mm-hmm. You know, it's all of those things that. Once you start to build upon it, the wider your reach or the ro- wider your your outlook mm-hmm. becomes, and the earlier you can do it, the better. Because if if you don't, and I taught this a few times, where people who don't have a solid budget and and, and never have, they lean on credit, which mm-hmm. digs them into a deeper hole. So it's like it's like the the ascension of okay, if I'm di- staying disciplined, mm-hmm. you know these are the benefits. But if I don't budget and I let this get out of hand for too long, it's like oh, I need a line of you know cash, a lot of credit somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know, you dig yourself into a deeper hole, and then it's like okay, how do I di- manage this debt on top of managing my my essentials? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not to say that people can't dig themselves out of that, but it just makes the fight much harder yeah. than, and it's really, again, a realization of, you know, where you stand. Like if you, if you don't have enough money to pay for this pair of shoes or for this type of hair or whatever it is, or for this trip, yeah. just don't do it. <laughs> just don't, just don't do it. Don't be, don't be ego tripping when it comes to those, those less substantial things, because if you do the right things, you'll have, more than enough to, you know, do the things that you enjoy. But there's a time and season for everything, as as Solomon says in, in Ecclesiastes 3. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's practi- right. practicality, right? Like, there's not one size fits all. Everybody, right. you know, we don't know how, how much debt you have, how old you are, um, and the such. So, I mean, at basic levels, right, that you can use online apps. Um, you know, I think it's called You Need a Budget. There's Mint.com. But then there's also, like, to your, to your point, there's, like, I know people that do the 50, 20, 30 rule. You could Google that. Um, I know there's like a Jewish law that I've been studying. They said 10% to tithe, 30% to invest, 10% to savings, 50% to spending. And even in that spending, it's wants, needs, and desires. Those are three different things. And when it comes to your savings, they say if you're single, this is what they say in the, in, in the investment world. Mm-hmm. If you're single, you should have three to six months of living yep. expenses saved. And if mm-hmm. you're married, six to 12 months. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If if there's one time we should know that we should really do it, COVID, right? Mm-hmm. COVID yep. came around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you get lost your job, you lost your your, your way of living. Mm-hmm. And right, some people might ask, okay, you guys are giving us this budgeting thing. Like, where's that in scripture? Like, 
Luke 14, 28 says, suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? Mm -hmm. That's budgeting, saving. Yeah. Proverbs 21, 20, the wise man saves for the future, but a foolish man spends whatever he gets. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 6, um, uh, chapter 6, verse 6. And it literally says, do like the ant, you sluggard, consider the ways and be wise, right? Like, and it explains how. You store up money in the summer. Yeah, yeah. so like it's, it's mm -hmm. all biblical, biblically based, but it differs for each person. But essentially at the, at the, at the basis, basic level, you should have more money coming in than going out. Mm. So how do I, let's, uh, okay, let's say I'm a person, because um, what is it? You said three to six months single yeah. and six to 12 months You're if married. You're married. Mm -hmm. Okay, for an average person, that sounds like a lot. That's you a know lot. what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So tough. how do I practically get, like, I, of course you can't do it all in one day, but practically let's just take somebody, I'm going to just say a clean number. They make $100,000, right? Mm -hmm. Let me let me do it even less, $50,000, right? Mm -hmm. How does somebody put themselves in a position, and let's say at the end of each month as it is now, they have nothing left over. They break even. Mm -hmm. How do they position themselves to be at a place where they can have three to six months of income sitting somewhere? I mean, in that scenario, it's realis realistically is is tough. But again, it it kind of goes back into understanding. Like, okay, so just just for clarity, has this per person worked out a budget or not? Let's say no. Let's just say, say no. no okay. Budget, they just they just, they just out, they're out, it's been okay. So yeah. uh, again, it's like you don't know until you know mm. for certain. So sure. you know until that person sits down and says, okay, these are the total costs of my bills month to month. This is what's fixed, which doesn't change, and this is what's variable, which depending on you know whatever usage or or what have you, that mm. cost may change, and this is what's left over. Um, and this is from what I'm getting. Again, it's it's really about, okay, when I look at this budget, where can I trim down to have something that I can store for later? Mm. You know, um, and, it, and it could, and it may not be a lot at first. It may be, let's, let's just be really extreme, a dollar. Let's just say, let's say it's a dollar. You save that dollar each, you know, each month for the next year, you got $12. And so, okay, you know, you reassess your budget. Some things may change. And again, this goes mm -hmm. back to financial planning. You know, at, you should at least be reassessing your situation once, preferably twice a year. So in most cases, every six to 12 months, something's probably changed. So you look at your budget again and say, okay, maybe I can tweak this or maybe I don't have to pay for this anymore. Maybe you pay off a car or, um, or what have you mm -hmm. say, okay. I'm going to increase my savings rate from $1 to $5 a, a month. And it kind of, you know, again, you have to kind of reassess. Some some months may be better than others. Mm -hmm. You go through your budget and say, oh, I got this amount of surplus this month. How am I going to best use it for do I need to pay anything? Do I need to pay any credit card debt? Do I need to, you know, handle anything with my car? Do I need to ha pay for any additional expenses? And then say, okay, anything else from this? favor that God's given me, put it stored away until you get to that point of, of that cushion of having that amount. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's really about just being diligent. Um there's not like a like a again, you know, when it comes to investing, when it comes to estate planning, you know, once you set it up, that plan may not be uh, uh applicable or it may not be feasible for where you are later on. So mm -hmm. you always have to reassess that. Got you. Um, always have to reassess that, um, but practically, that's that's kind of where I where I would start. And I've got that question before too. Like, what if you ain't got no mm -hmm. money to save? Like, start somewhere. Yeah. If, if it's nothing but a quarter, you know, you're building the that good the good habits. Got you. Yeah. Shahid, what you got? That's good. On a on a practical tip, um, I mean, there is a terminology called benefits cliff. Mm. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. Mm -hmm. Basically, mm -hmm. where if I don't make enough money, I'm in debt. Mm -hmm. Is actually more is more of a survival thing that I may work a job, I may be the living poor, basically. Where I have a job, mm -hmm. but if I make more than what I'm supposed to, then I'm cut off of SNAP benefits, 
Mm-hmm. I don't get daycare oh, yeah. assistance. I don't get the transportation vouchers. And for a lot of people, they want to get to the point where they're investing. They have a 401k. They have IRA Roth. They mm-hmm. want to have these things or even tithe. But if I make more, then the government is going to cut off some of the yeah. assistance that I need. Mm-hmm. And that's a legitimate thing for a lot of people it is. where they – Because their income, when it rises, other benefits are going to get cut off. So they call it a benefits cliff. Basically, Mm -hmm. someone needs to make almost 30 to 40 percent of what they already make in order to really survive. So this gets back Mm -hmm. to the living wage index. Mm -hmm. If you're in an area where you truly can't afford to live there and you're receiving social services, whether it's child care, housing vouchers, SNAP benefits for food, Medicaid or some type of assistance, some people legitimately can't make more money or is going to mm. cancel their benefits because they, they hit a certain point where they price themselves out. Mm-hmm. So it's like mm-hmm. basically if they made more money, most likely the amount of money that they made more would cancel out. It would disqualify due the, them due to the lack of the benefit. benefits that they Correct. got. Correct. So then it's a most people know their budget because- if they're poor or they're receiving some type of public assistance, there's a number that they know. Once their household hits that number, they get cut some, off. Something's getting mm-hmm. cut off. Mm-hmm. And there are other if you're in that position, talk to a social worker because they they can provide wraparound services. There are grants that most cities provide for people who want to get past that benefits cliff. There are workforce development programs where it says, Hey, look. You work at a car dealership or you, you're you at a fast food restaurant or mm. you're doing clerical work. Here's a program so you can get a certification that'll make you $7 an hour more mm. to get you in a position that when your benefits are cut off, you're actually in a good place to handle those household finances on your own. Right. So that that's just one that's practical good. thing that people should be aware of. Like, don't be ashamed if you need public assistance to get to the point where you're living a life of true abundance, Mm -hmm. utilize those assistants. Like back to the biblical understanding, like in in biblical times when there was a famine, Joseph stored the grain Mm -hmm. and he provided that for people who didn't have, you know, who who didn't have the grain. They had to pay for it. There was, but there was government assistance (laughs) that was literally provided via God and his wisdom through Joseph Mm -hmm. and Pharaoh in hard times and famine and economic downshifts. Go to the government for help mm. in order to help you get past this particular uh, drought in your finances or this particular season in life. Or and this thing, t- it takes like it takes time, right? Like yeah, it does. When we say the three to six months, it's not like hey, you got to have this by tomorrow, right? Yeah. If it takes you a year, two years, three years, and you just say, listen, all I can afford is fifty dollars a month. Put that aside and don't touch it. Um, but to your point, like. Take a look at your budget currently and like really sit down and say like what's wants, what's needs, and what's desires, right? Mm-hmm. If you got Apple Music, Hulu, Disney, Netflix, and all that alone you, costs like, like that's fifty, sixty dollars each. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah, gotta ask yourself real. like, do I really need that? And mm-hmm. maybe I could cancel one and put that money towards saving, or or honestly like. Should you even be saving in a season? Because if you're sitting there with a bunch of credit card and medical debt, yeah, you should be not based on what you want to do, right? If you want to pay off the debt, focus on that. But just realize some of those debt has with high inflation that mm-hmm. we have right now, mm-hmm. those debts have high interest rates, and you don't want to get yourself caught up in Paying having that. to pay all that stuff yeah. back at you know credit some credit cards twenty seven, twenty nine percent. Yeah, yeah. It'd be better for you to pay off that card than to so put that per money person. towards the service yeah, to the saving. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And scripture says like, oh no man, nothing but love, right? Like and like, oh no man, nothing but love. Mm. So you should stay away from debt if you don't know how to probably use it. Like some people know how to leverage credit very well, mm-hmm. very, very well. But that's not for everybody. Got you. So what about like talk more about it? Both of y'all started to hit on it, like, um, necessary lifestyle changes. Cause I know we talked about small like Apple, Hulu, but like, what if, like, encourage somebody that might need to actually make like a humbling lifestyle change to in order to to be able to get where they need to be. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's a uh, that's real. So I I went through a humbling lifestyle change in 2020. Had a job, got let go. I got let go in mid March, and I was actually supposed to move into a house that I was renting like three days before. Mm-hmm. So I moved into the house with no job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And because of uh, every how everything worked out, I didn't get unemployment 
um, until like the end of May. Mm. And I literally had to leverage family, like by the grace of God. Like it was literally by the grace of God that he literally sought me through. And I had to make some cuts, man. Like, you know, we ain't going different places. Like, yeah. you know, I'm not worried about certain things. Even to this day, like the shoes I got on, these are brand new <laughs> from Facebook Marketplace for $30. Yeah. Like literally, I still don't buy brand new stuff. I'll go on Facebook mm-hmm. Marketplace. Mm-hmm. I'll get something used, um, you know, if, if there's, and God knows my heart, Lord, I want some new shoes. And then boom, $30, yeah. brand new. Like, come on, that's yeah. that's that's crazy, right? But you have to make those changes uh, first. Number one, uh, you have to be, you have to be sure of where you are and knowing um, that is okay and give yourself some grace. Mm-hmm. And sometimes there's that peer pressure of like everyone's going out to eat or in some places where you work, it's almost like career suicide if you don't, mm-hmm. they call it that. That's what my friend said, man. I have to mm-hmm. go out to eat every every day with the guys because it's like career suicide if I don't. If mm-hmm. I brown bag it and I'm sitting at my desk, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Everyone's going out to eat and then happy hour and then people see that as a way mm-hmm. to advance. God provides all my needs. Yeah. And this particular time in life is only temporary. Mm. It's only temporary. So if I have to cut back on something, if I have to get a roommate, if I have to be that roommate, mm. if I have to, you know, uh, take public transit and only drive my car two days a week, yeah. if I have to really coordinate on when I'm getting my groceries, like really make those adjustments and be strict with those things. I had to do the same thing. I had to yeah. just be really uh, strict with certain things, cut certain things out. I ain't go places. I'm like, okay, I'm going to utilize all of these parks that the county built. Like, yeah. I, this is my... <laughs> that you pay uh, for. Right? You, start going to the playground, you start going to the basketball court. You start going to the parks. Like, oh, wait a minute. Saying, this quick. is free fun. Yeah, How, yeah, you know, yeah. like, and you realize that a lot of people are just utilizing the free fun. It mm-hmm. doesn't take much to be social, to go out, to do different things, pack mm-hmm. your lunch. And you realize that that has a ripple effect on other things as well. Yeah. Mm. I, th- I feel That's like good. I feel like too those circumstances really help people kind of put things in perspective to when God increases them in their season again. It's like well now they're much better off because their mindset is more oh, um, yeah. humble in their spirit. Um, and what you were saying about you know the circumstance of like I, mean, I don't feel I don't feel right if I don't go out with my friends to, to eat every every Friday happy hour or whatever. <laughs> Scripture says in Second Corinthians um, ten twelve through fourteen says for we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Meaning your situation. And my situation, you know, may not be the same. So I can't, you know, I can't feel like I can do this comfortably if I know for a fact my situation is not warranting me or allowing me to, you know, to to practice this. If I have all these, you know, this major life circumstance going on, um, then he goes on to say, but we will not boast things without our measure. But according to the measure by of the rule, which God had distributed to us a measure to reach even unto you. And he's talking about, you know, the the measure of the gifts given to the church. But mm-hmm. in this in this context of finances, God's not going to give you, you know, less than what you can manage. But it's again, it's up to us to exercise that faith and and, and really, you know, come to the understanding like, yo, like this is this is just my season of, um, this is yeah. just my have not season. Like let me just let me buckle down and just bide my time and trust and trust God in this situation until He increases me again. Or, you know what I'm saying? And you'll know, you know, if you can handle this, ain't going back to the parable of the, of the yeah. stewardship of talents. If I can handle this, yeah. you know, when He you know covers me again and increases me, you know, I'll, I'll be good. You know, that's real. Amen. I got a scripture to to piggyback off that. This is Philippians. 4 verse 11 through 13. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned that whatever state that I am mm-hmm. to be content, I know how to be a base and I know how to be abound. Everywhere and in all things, I've learned to both be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm-hmm. So it's like Paul knew his mission. It didn't, whether he had money, whether he didn't have the money in that particular season, he knew that those things didn't limit him from spreading the gospel. Yeah. So it's like 
if you find yourself in a season where finances may be challenging or things may be tough, one of the parts that I left out was when I was unemployed, man, I was with the church delivering food to first line workers, Mm. helping Mm. out as much as I can. It was like, yo. All right, cool. Let me. I got this time. Let me. Let me it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't cost anything to pray for someone. It like, doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't cost anything to That's to help real. somebody out. Your neighbor. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. like you. You may be sat down for a reason. Um, to, to make you more aware to cut out the distractions. So, like, whether you have the money or not, mm-hmm. get back to the assignment. Like, yeah. what is the assignment? And That's really good. hone in. Like, all right, Lord, you got my attention. Yeah. yeah. I, I can be doing something even with. Without having the money in my bank account, that doesn't stop me from cutting my neighbor's grass or yeah. to mm-hmm. to helping someone at the grocery store carry their bags or to pray for someone to serve at church or whatever it may be. So, you know, don't overcomplicate it. Uh, money helps with ministry, but so does prayer, and that doesn't cost right. anything. That's real, bro. There's, um, I'm a very practical person, right? Like, live below your means. Proverbs thirteen seven says, one person pretends to be rich yet has nothing. Mm-hmm. Another person pretends to be poor and has great wealth. I'm not saying to act to be poor, right? Because a, a, a lot of times we take things literally and yeah. you're just like, I'm just eating ramen noodles and hot dogs and then you know, you're pretty, di- <laughs> yeah. pretty diabetic. Right? Right. <laughs> but live below your means, yeah. right? Like mm-hmm. personally, and I, I'm fortunate enough to be doing fairly all right thank, by the grace of God, but I drive a 07 Toyota Corolla. Mm-hmm. I my wife meal preps. We meal prep every week, so I take lunch every single every single day. Um, th- there's things that you could do. I'm, I'm probably the, one of the flyest people that shop at Marshalls. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, you sleep on Marshalls. Like, this Marshalls got this Marshalls right here. Marshalls got the drip, Quick to tell people, like, so everybody be like, yo, that's a fly shirt. Drew be like, Marshalls. 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 Oh, 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 Cotswold. Yeah. yeah. I'm telling you. But um, there's things that you can do, right? And I, I think the one of the biggest things, and we talk about this all the time, for believers, right? We, not even a, a, to the measure of mastery, but we got to understand like the law and the mystery of like time and seasons. Mm-hmm. Like we, it, sometimes like we think like all as a believer, all life is an abundance and God's going to rescue every single thing, which yeah. he will, right? Yeah. But then yeah. also we also think it's like, woe is me and mm-hmm. I just got to like be meek and die. And <laughs> when, when it's bowling season, what, we were taught when it's balling season, like store up because yeah. like drought will come. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. So like that's the word with yeah. with Joseph and and Pharaoh, like how many of those Hebrew people? In, in, I'm sorry, in Egypt, like mm. how many of them were believers? And the famine still came. Yeah, right. So like just be prepared. Like things in life will happen just because we live in a, a time of you know time and season. So if things are going well, you can put aside some money. Put aside. Mm-hmm. So when, you know, drought does come, you can still sustain. But then on the flip side, too, like, it's not going to last forever. You will have a ball-out season kind yeah. of thing. And I believe in, like, moderation. So I'm, I am I can't just, like, I'm not the type of person where it's like, I'm not spending that. Oh, I'm just going to save. Like, yeah. treat yourself within reason. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, you could still take yourself out to dinner. But, like, if you want to go to Dubai and it's like, maybe hold off on that trip yeah. to next year. Yeah. But find like a find a fine line. That's good. And like just work with that within the season because it's not gonna last forever. That's good. I think one of the other things we talked about like humble, you know, lifestyle changes, and like even for me, like stay home sometimes if you if you can afford it. Like I've talked to all y'all at different points about it. Like I'm at the crib with with my family, and so mm-hmm. like I just feel led to encourage somebody listening. You might be like, man, I don't want to do this. If you can do it, like do it, do, do it, it, right? Yeah. And all three of them at. at, at in my different times talking to him about him have been like, bro, if you can do it, like do it. So yeah, you know? I would have loved to do it at least for for a year to stack mm-hmm. more more bread, man, if I could. But yeah, so I had to get going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's biblical um, when we read Old Testament things. So whether it's Abraham or uh, Isaac, or usually everyone stayed in their father's tent, mm-hmm. and it was like the father who had multiple generations on his compound or property. Mm-hmm. And we steer away from that because society, when you're 18, you're grown, you yeah. get on your own, or you, yeah. you go to college and you mm-hmm. look at certain cultures, man, the entire family grows up in one house mm-hmm. just to eliminate those expenses. But for us, it's the it's the desire, it's covetedness, right? Mm-hmm. You see people have other things, you, you want to have it on your own. And because family households are broken, 
or they may not have a certain mindset, it's almost like this apprehension of even being perceived as poor mm -hmm. that I'm going to go in the opposite direction. So, you know, you hear that song, uh, No Scrubs, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you know, yeah. sitting on the passenger side of your best friend's ride <laughs> trying to holler at me. Yeah. Or, you know, you, you couch surfing and we, we give these derogatory terms. Now, if you mm -hmm. just mismanaging your money, you're out there uh, trying to portray a lifestyle that you, you really don't live, that's yeah. one thing. It's another thing that if you're in a humbling situation or mm -hmm. particular season in life and you have to be at your parents' house under your father's tent, man, that's biblical. Like that's yeah, really. there's a provision to that. Even yeah, when covering, Jesus yeah. said that, look, I go to prepare a place for you. Yeah. Like he didn't say that's like good. you have to come to heaven with your riches and depending on how many talents you multiply, that's the size house you get. Mm. He said, literally, I'm going to prepare the place for you. Yeah. Like you're living in my father's house, there's many mansions. Mm -hmm. So like even the father is still providing for us, mm. but we stray away from that naturally, even on this earth. So if you do have a father, you do have a family that you can live under their provision for a particular season. That's like the blessing of the Lord in disguise, mm -hmm, um, right. you know, like for that particular season. So I would say, man, don't be, don't be ashamed of that. Whoever may be listening is Thanks. like, is okay. Like, don't compare. Don't look to the left or right or where you should be in your thirties, yeah. your forties, whatever it may be. A lot of people who got used in life, I mean, they were well off in age, and they didn't even know who they were into their forties, fifties, sixties, or seventies. So you can't compare your life to anyone else. There's really it gets back to assignment, yeah. knowing your assignment and perceiving the season in life and then utilizing whatever wisdom that God has mm -hmm. to make sure you maximize that season. Mm -hmm. Facts. And then just being humble enough to do it, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or, or to talk, bro, I, I'm not going to lie. As I see here, I almost didn't say it because I'm like, I don't want to say it, bro. It's a lot of people that watch that. But like, and so it's like that pride almost stopped me from... Oh, wow. Even mentioning it, how how many more people might be watching? It's like okay, you got sigh relief just because yeah, you said like, it, right? And so you know, just being able to be humble enough to say like, all right, this is what it is. Let me make the most of it. And I also say like, you never know what God can do in that. Like just through different, just through me being there, I've noticed different things within the home. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. just you never know your presence at the crib may actually make a, a huge difference, like spiritually. Um, emotionally, and there may be some healing or um, some different things that would not have happened if you were on your own. So, but that's wisdom, man. Like, mm -hmm. like uh, wisdom is the principal thing. Like, you yeah. get that out of out of move of wisdom. Like, you could like not do that. Yeah, and then it's an entirely different conversation. What happened now? Where it's like I need help or somebody got to take care of me, kind of thing. You no, know? like it's yeah. Thank God that you have the luxury to be able to do that. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. That's why I said, like, you know, when I'm that. thinking about it. I'm like, man, even in your, again, it's all perception as well. Like, if the perception is okay, I gotta have my this, that, that. Now you're you feel rushed, right? And now mm -hmm. you feel like yep. you're behind schedule. But it's like, bro, one, you don't know what guys are doing in that. Mm -hmm. You don't. And then if we, even if we just talk practical to the fi financial, we just talked about reducing the amount of expenses. If you have, if you're paying, bro, rent is crazy. I've been looking at, I've been looking at stuff. I'm like, rent, rent is, is crazy. Stupid. If you can just reduce the amount of rent for a season, going back to like being able to save three to six or six to twelve months, if you can be able to have that in the pocket just for later, bro, that's a game changer. You, you blessing like without even knowing, which you probably do. You blessing your children and your children's children because mm -hmm. like you could go and. Get a house now and Figure high interest out, rates, yeah. and then like getting the crazy debt, and then like you teaching your kids that, mm. and you don't have nothing to show for it. Yeah, that's real <laughs> wisdom. Yeah, so humble yourself, do what you gotta do to get to where you need to go. So, um, all right, let's talk real quick. We're gonna wrap up in this in a little minute. Let's just talk about investments. So we talked about kind of we talked about ties. We talked about part of the ninety. We talked about saving. Um, how do I make my money make more money? I know there's so many different ways to invest, real estate, mm -hmm. um, stocks, all of this stuff. But let's let's hit two areas. Let's say somebody has, uh, Jerome, let's say somebody has $100 a month. Not a whole lot, but $100 a month extra that they can invest after they've already put money in saving. And then let's take somebody that has $1,000 a month. What would you say, like, you should do really quickly again, and and it's based off the individual, right? So I, I 
I would have to talk to the person. But I would say first comes first is invest in mindset. Mm -hmm. I don't care how much money you have, you have the wrong mindset. That money's not going to last long. So I would say mm -hmm. invest in your education first. Um, get books outside of the Bible, right? There's secular books that teach you about investing. But to answer the question, right, $100 and $1,000, like you can buy into mutual funds or ETFs that mirrors the entire economy, right? And that's, a, that's another conversation. <laughs> ETF, like look it up, but mm -hmm. essentially it's a basket of stocks. Or if you have like a fruit basket, for, that, for the sake of it, it's All-Star Weekend now, right? Mm -hmm. The ETF is pretty much like the West team, right? So you have a bunch of other players from other teams mm -hmm. under one umbrella, under one team. Yeah. And those players, individual players, are essentially like different companies. So if you have like a tech ETF, which is the West team, like, you know, your West, your, your Steph Curry might be Apple and, you know, whoever is a starter might be Microsoft, Amazon, Google. Mm -hmm. And you get it for one price. You buy and you hold you hold it, you don't sell it. Like just check it once a year or twice a year and then you'll start to see as you do it often, right? If you do it month to month or every six months, or as more you do it, you see compounded interest goes from there. Mm -hmm. But I, I would say first things first is mindset because I believe as believers, like we, like we, sadly, like it's ignorance and pride that keeps us stuck, right? Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, you know, my people shall pass for a lack of knowledge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we stop there. But he also says because we reject the knowledge, he will also reject us. So, like, invest in knowledge and accept it for what it is. Yeah. Jesus will save everything. But, like, you still got to be able to put these things together to, to invest. So, I would say, honestly, invest in education, number two, life insurance, man. Like, we all going to die. Mm -hmm. We don't know when. At least have something to cover your, your own debts. But then also, like, that you can leave for your children that can help them out. Because imagine if... This is a fair mind, which I know it would never happen, but imagine when I have kids and my son is called to be the next Ben Carson or the next doctor, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm stunting his growth or delaying it for what God's called him to do simply because I didn't have the money to pay for his education. Mm -hmm. So, like, take it serious, right? Like, yeah. God's handled his salvation. I'm responsible for my family's day-to-day -day through Christ to be able to make those things happen. So get education, but it's no, it's no get-rich-quick scheme I can give you. No. Yeah. It takes time. That's real. Yeah. And and the, really the biggest component of investing is time value of money. Yep. The earlier you do it, you know, the the better off you'll be, especially if you're staying true to some of the practices, you know, we've been talking about in terms of staying consistent with saving and, and investing into that. You know, then again, the other component of it, of it is we're only assigned a certain amount of time on this earth. You know, and even Jesus said, um, you know, after he healed the blind man, uh, this is John 9 and 4. He says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, the night coming when no man yep. can work. Um, so, again, it really goes into, you know, education. Of course, you want to do your due diligence on kind of what makes sense. But again, you know, what is, what is your goal if it's retirement? All right let's sit down with somebody or let's come up with an understanding of what does that look like? Do I want to retire earlier? Do I want to retire at 60, 65, whatever the case may be? Or what is the goal? Do you want to just, you know, have a growth portfolio that's just, you know, as speculative as possible? All right, what's the best way to, to, to put that to work? So I think people think of investing in the wrong way, to your point, is – I hear, hear it all the time in my community. <laughs> hey, man, tell me how to flip my money quicker. Man, it's not about that, <laughs> Bitcoin. man. Bitcoin. Big, big, Bitcoin. Tell me about Bitcoin. Man, I'm not going to tell you that, man. Inve <laughs> investing, as it's been done for generations on generations, mm -hmm. it is a long game. It is a very long game. It's much like the faith that we that we walk. You know, for a while, you're on milk. And then after a while, you know, you get on strong meat. At some point, you you know, so if you stay close enough to it, you'll be able to yeah. branch out and do some other things. Like there are other different type of investments. Like from from Jerome's standpoint, he was talking about um, from a currency standpoint, how can I put my money to work in the market? Mm -hmm. But then once you start to build upon that, there are other areas where you can kind of start to build out your wealth portfolio, such such as real estate, which is a whole nother ball game where it involves capital, which is, you know, another another word for money on hand. It, it involves leverage, which is debt. Mm -hmm. It involves credit and involves, you know, taxation. You know, are you going to 
put your real estate under a certain company, whether it's, whether it's a, again, these are, I'm just hitting high, high level topics practically. Yeah. Can I jump in two seconds real, based go, on go what ahead. you said about real estate? Like, mm-hmm. give second thoughts and pray and fast on whether Definitely. to sell <laughs> grandma, great grandma's house. Because real estate on the planet is going up. Mm. Don't just be quick just to take the first offer yeah. because you get, you know, a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars and then ten, fifteen, twenty years from now to flip it for somebody got it for one point <laughs> five, two like yeah. I have a friend so, so. that like his mom bought it bought a home in Charlotte, like in the eighties, where like they weren't even like like uptown the south end kind of thing. Mm. She held on to it in the eighties. He just sold it for like three and a half million dollars. Mm. So like take your time, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's and that, that's, and that's the biggest thing. Like time is your biggest asset when it comes to investing right so and again you know biggest thing is to always counsel the wisdom of god you know you know the fear of the lord is the beginning of all wisdom so if you're not moving in a way that's reflected of what you know he's leading leading you into you know you may make mistakes sometimes you know you take mm-hmm. risk and you know things happen um but but again it's really the the the, the facet of you know, again, shifting your mindset, you know, people, especially in our community, quite honestly, think of, you know, currency as something we have to work for forever. But, you know, in reality, you know, the earlier we can get our money working for us, you know, the better off we'll be. The The other component, and Jerome hit on it really quickly with the life insurance is, all right, how do I make sure that when God calls me home, how do I make sure that this is able to benefit who I'm leaving behind? Yeah. You know, right? Yeah. Again, Jesus, you know, there's a day when night coming and you can't you can't do anything, mm-hmm. you know, and you don't know when that is. I always stress to people when I'm talking to them so far as financial planning, your estate plan and your continuity planning, which is essentially what happens if I'm still here but I can't really, you know, do anything on my own. I can't manage this money. I can't even have a conversation about it. Mm-hmm. What what does what does that look like, right? Have I planned for that eventuality? Just like saving, you know, same same concept, same exact concept. Um, so, I mean, again, practically, you have to start thinking about how do I want this divvied up, or what's the best way to protect my family from additional costs when when I go when I go away because not, not a lot of people are thinking about things like probate which is a court process to <laughs> divvy out the, the 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 assets it takes a lot of time takes a lot of money mm-hmm. the more that you know that you can do to eliminate that all the better then it's like all right what 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 is my ideal situation to push this forward like what what are my what is what is my really what's my family dynamic and how do I want this to work? And mm-hmm. so it really, again, goes goes down to using your gifts of, of discerning spirits, using wisdom, um, but also just, you know, again, always having a plan. You know what I'm saying? We've been referencing Joseph this, this whole time. There's going to come a time where something's going to need to be put into action, mm-hmm. you know, and, and not even just from a financial standpoint, from a healthcare standpoint, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, I hate to say... Um, I, I literally a few weeks ago just left a situation with my aunt in DC where that 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 situation was really messy because those healthcare proxies in terms of all right who do I want to make these decisions hmm. on my behalf where I can't even speak for myself mm-hmm. it, it you know it you know it caused a lot of confusion I dealt with mm-hmm. my grandfather when he passed away you know you know things weren't as tight. And, you know, it caused a lot of, you know, financial mismanagement, some confusion, uh, this, that and the like. So the less you can do now while you're still able to to do it, you know, with your hands, you know, be able to articulate things and draw that out while you have the resources to do it. I mean, get on that as early as possible. Mm-hmm. Get on that as early as possible. I mean, like I said, we don't know when the son of man will come and come thieves in the night. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't know he come tomorrow, come right now. You know, so it's just a matter of, again, just being real with that, and and it's and it's a it's a difficult thing for people to do because it's it makes them have to reel with their own mortality, right? And it's a really emotional topic to talk about for mm-hmm. for some, but it's just it's just it's just a fact. You know, we're spiritual be- beings having having a natural experience. Our time on this earth is limited. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. In some capacity, again, 
appointment of our own death or the rapture of the church. So, you know, it, it, it really comes down to, uh, again, just making best use of, of your time. And, and that's really the basis of investing financial planning in general. That's real, bro. Yeah. That's good. Shahi, you got anything? Well, yeah. Last thing, if um, don't invest in something you don't understand. Facts. Uh, there's a lot mm-hmm. of people who are manipulating folks. You know, you want to be a landlord on the weekend, invest in my program. Or, you yeah. know, you, you have these, uh, um, you know, people who speak regular nomenclature or vernacular to the everyday person and they package up schemes to appeal yeah. to you. Mm-hmm. So you have institutional uh, investors who will brand somebody to appeal to Kevin. Yo, I got this program. You know, we're going to flip these stops and options. And, mm-hmm. man, I, I live that life is like gambling. You yeah. know, I made thousands in a day, then <laughs> lost thousands in a day. It's mm-hmm. it's really tricky because I really didn't understand uh, how to invest in those things. I am, I'm better suited now, and I don't do it because I understand uh, the yeah. risks that are associated with it. Yeah. If you want an easy first step, man, find a credit union and get a CD for nine months. And just practice the habit of taking a certain amount of money, putting it away in a trusted institution, letting it grow in some form of interest, and and test yourself with that. Mm-hmm. That's easy to do, right? Just go to a credit union, mm-hmm. get a get a CD, get a, a short term saving account, put some money aside, forget that is there, and then once you've tested yourself in that, then look at other options and talk to someone That's good. at a credit union if if you know, stocks, options, and things that may be beyond your realm of understanding. Invest at the level of the understanding. And to mm-hmm. Jerome's point, get more education so you can understand the world that we have today. You can literally get PhD level education from the, you know, from the tip of your thumb on a phone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's real. That's my two cents. Yee. All right. If you listen to this episode, man, it's, it's, it's so much, right? It's a lot of information. I'm sure. If the, if the time permitted, we could keep doing this for about oh yeah a, wow a few yeah. more hours. Wow. We can right? get to the weeds like yeah. Yeah. like that. Um, but just take this as like at least a, a baseline, right? From this episode, you should be encouraged to right. If you're not already tithing, uh, give an offering. You should be tithing. You should be encouraged to uh, create a budget. As we said, there's many different types of budgets. There's many different circumstances, and everybody has a different thing, and so. Uh, pray, do your research, be spirit led as you go about which budget is right for me. Um, and then even as you do that, consider how can I give to the church? How can I give to people? How can I save? And how can I invest? All right. And, and through those different things, I think that just just taking the time to actually create a budget, taking the time to actually pray about these things, like that in itself is already putting yourself at a advantage over most people. So I know you might be hearing this and you're like, yo, this is a lot of stuff, right? Don't get overwhelmed. Just take one thing, like whatever thing God is leading you to do, if it's just create a budget today or if it's, okay, how much can I cut down on expenses today? Or let me start researching investments or, you know, was it ETFs? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like different things like that. How can I just take one thing? Don't let this whole episode like overwhelm you. I got to do everything in one. It's like, nah. These dudes talking about years of it, you know, uh, overall experience that they're talking about, and so that's the that's the beauty of having people that have are, are willing to share their life experiences. Is that in a hour, two hours, you get to get the collective of how many years I don't even know of experiences, trial and errors, uh, you know, L's, wins, like all that stuff. And you get to hear it in, in, in a matter of, like I said, an hour, two hours. And so uh, if you're listening, I just pray that you're encouraged. I want to quickly just um, just pray over everybody listening. So, Lord God, we just thank you. We love you. God, we thank you for this episode. God, we pray that you are pleased. I pray for each and every person listening, God, and I pray that um, we are all just drawn to be better stewards of what you've given us, Lord. Let us be reminded that it is not by... Uh, might not by power, but it's by your spirit, God. Let us be reminded that um, all things come from you, God, that at the end of the day, no matter how rich we are or poor we are, God, you are in control, Lord. You are sovereign. Um, as it, as the scripture says, God, let us um, desire neither poverty nor riches, God, but our daily bread, Lord. Give us, give us the 
the amount that you have for us, the amount that will most please you, God, the amount that will allow us to uh, be proper stewards, give to the poor, clothe uh, the, 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 the needy, Lord, um, and to be just an example of you, God. Let, let the money that we have and the uh, things that we have, God, um, glorify you at the end of the day. Help other people be strengthened, Lord, uplifted, God, um, and encouraged to give to one another even, Lord, that uh, as you, we know that you are a provider, God, but you use people, you use us to do that, Lord. So I pray against any um, selfishness or stinginess, Lord, and we just pray that we would be willing vessels, God, that we would be willing um, vessels, God, that you can use to pour through us, Lord. So we just say, use us, use our lives, God, be glorified, God, and we just pray that you uh, continue to bless us and continue to increase our territory, God, according to your will and to your plan. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yo, if you listen to this episode, I appreciate you. Do me a favor, <clears throat> like, comment, subscribe, send it to somebody, um, leave a rating and a review if you're watching on Apple or Spotify or anything like that. But at the end of the day, remember to make today worth living. Peace.